Um, I'm currently working with Professor Steve Perkins um, in the lab which focuses on structural immunology. So they use highly sensitive protein purification methods to isolate some proteins for the immune system. I was interested in working on a project in this lab because um, the lab uses a lot of techniques that I've studied during my undergraduate degree. So they use a lot of protein purification and they study protein-protein interactions. And especially the project that I'm focusing on, I get to purify proteins from both yeast and bacteria expression systems. So that's quite interesting. The defect atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome is known to cause mortality in children due to renal failure. A uh, mutation in one of the proteins that we're working in is commonly associated with this disease due to dysregulation of the complement system and so understanding the structure and binding is critical to developing approaches for the disease. We are interested in a recombinant protein which has been expressed in an E. coli expression system. The first step in purification is injecting the bacterial lysate into the superloop. This lysate contains the desired protein that we're trying to isolate. The superloop allows the introduction of large volumes of secondary solutions into a pressurised fluid system. Here I am loading the superloop into the active purification system. All the wires must be connected properly to ensure that the lysate flows through the column. The next step is to manually input a set of commands into the active purification system. The active purification system is great because you can set parameters and it's controlled automatically rather than manually. When carrying out protein purification, it's particularly important to take samples to know the exact location of your protein, whether this is in the supernatant or in the pellet. To each of the samples, I am adding a reducing agent as well as a dye. This also helps the protein sample to sink in the gel. We vortex the samples to ensure that all of the contents are thoroughly mixed. The gel that we are using is a new page gel. This gel has been prepared for us. Buffer is required when carrying out gel electrophoresis as this carries the current, allowing the proteins to separate. Here I am loading the wells with 10 microliters of sample, reducing agent and dye. Here I am connecting the electrodes to the voltage box and setting the current. We will leave the gel to run for approximately 40 minutes. This should allow enough time for the proteins to separate. Having eluted all other proteins from the column using our buffer, our protein of interest should have adhered to the column. I am adding puffer block to the buffer. Puffer block should inactivate the thrombin in the column. The buffer and puffer block solution is injected into the superloop. Tubing is attached to each end of the superloop to enable a connection to the machine. The machine has been programmed to collect fractions of 0.5 mL in the hope that our protein will be isolated. The machine uses absorbance measurements to identify the location of our protein. A peak can be seen on the monitor and this represents our isolated and purified protein. I think the reality of working in a lab has been quite different. I've really enjoyed it, I've absolutely loved every minute of it. I think the only thing that I wasn't expecting was, I suppose, the time delays, which sounds a bit silly because you're aware that these things do take quite a few hours, but it's not until you're sat there waiting for your experiments, you know, finish or run. So that's probably the only thing that I found quite different, but other than that, you know, they've met my expectations completely.